Welcome, everyone, to the second episode of this two-part mini-series, Miss Clicks Presents Rat Queens D&D. I am very excited to be here. I'm Anna Prosser Robinson, here on behalf of Miss Clicks, you, should, you could say. If you've never watched our channel before, we're a positive community that's dedicated to uplifting geeks and gamers by providing support and exposure, especially for women role models. We're here today to do something we all love, which is celebrate each other by playing some D&D and hitting each other with imaginary weapons or hitting monsters together with imaginary <laughs> weapons, Yay. either one. Um, and we're very, very honored because we have the creator of Rat Queens here with us as our DM, Curtis Weeb is here. Hello. And um, <laughs> Curtis, could you, in case people have not met you before, could you introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what Rat Queens is? Sure. Uh, I am Curtis Weeb. I am the writer, co-creator of the Rat Queens comic book series. Uh, it's a comic book series that has about three volumes out now, and we are coming back with a brand new arc, March 1st, and we have a new artist named Owen Jenny, who is a, a friend of mine. If you ever followed me on our, our D20 Twitch channel, uh, D20 Babe, sorry, uh, we used to run a Star Wars game with him, and also a game that I made up. It's, it's based on the James Bond role-playing game system, but he was always one of the funnier players. Anyway, he's the artist on the series now. And Rat Queens is about a team of adventurers that uh, go out and kill monsters for money and usually spend all that money by partying or being very wasteful uh, with their time and their life in general. Uh, it's a, like, some, I think someone, a fan, told me that they would call it, they told their friends that it was Lord of the Rings is directed by Quentin Tarantino, and I thought that was pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. High praise <laughs> on all counts. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's also meet all of our players. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> That's me. Uh, the, awesome. Let's meet all of our players as well. We have a couple of familiar faces that you guys have seen on Miss Clicks, but a few that you may uh, only be catching for the first time. So let's start this time with DJ Wheat. Well, hopefully everyone's watched part one and they at least are a little bit familiar, but my name's DJ Wheat and uh, definitely uh, enjoy playing role-playing games on Twitch. Uh, I had a passion for it very, very young, when I was very, very young, and got into games like Shadowrun, and uh, played a lot of Mech Warrior, and then played a lot of like uh, homebrew stuff as well. Had a lot of fun with that, but never done a uh, Miss Clicks campaign before, so excited to be here and uh, excited to play. Betty, once again, I'm also a big fan of the comic, so again, thank you, Curtis, for being here and running the game as well. No Actually, I have to give Marcus credit because he's the one who got me into Rat Queens. He was like, oh, Anna, you would love this series. Nice, you have to nice, read it. Nice. Yeah. Wicked. Totally. All right. Um, let's do Steven next. Silent Osiris. Yo. Hello, everybody. I'm Silent Osiris. I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons type games on the internet. Um, it was actually Renee Reynosa who got me into Rat mm, Queens. Nice. So, like, you know, yeah, all of the uh, Rat Rat Queen's love coming from every side of Twitch. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm playing D, a, um, an atheist cleric to uh, <laughs> in Nyargoth? Is it Nyargoth? Uh, uh, in Nyargoth. Ni Nyargoth. <laughs> Learn how okay, to say cool. your god's name, Steven. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not important. I don't it's really, really believe in it anyway. <laughs> you know, um, anyway, a giant flying space squid god, which is awesome. So. I'm on board. I'm covered in ogre poo, but I'm on board. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you may recognize Britt Weissman from Prophecy, but Britt, introduce yourself. Hello, it's me, Britt Weissman. Uh, yeah, I'm on Prophecy. I've been playing D&D &D for a little less than a year, so I'm still kind of new to it, but I love it. I also play another role-playing game called Apocalypse World on Mystics on Thursdays. That's super fun. With um, one of my friends. Yes, <laughs> yes. I just recently destroyed the entire game. Yes. Thursday by burning everything down. Um, awesome. And I'm very excited to be doing this campaign because I love Rat Queens. Um, and I'm going to be playing Hannah, who is an elven uh, wizard. She is very protective of the group, tries to be a leader, uh, has kind of a chip on her shoulder and a little bit of a, a bad attitude sometimes. <laughs> But she means well and cares for her friends. So I'm very excited to finish this adventure with y'all today. That's me. And I'm Anna. As I said, I am, I'm here on Miss Clicks on Tuesdays playing D&D &D Devotion, which is a show um, playing with 
relationships in fifth edition D&D, which has been pretty fun. I play a bard um, with a valley girl accent. He's really fun. And uh, I'm going to be playing Violet. She's kind of the uh, staunch, righteous warrior of the group, I would say. And uh, I wouldn't say she has a chip on her shoulder so much as she's aware of kind of the privilege she was born in and looking for her own way. Uh, and she tends to really like to push to do the right thing and also really likes to run into battle just like me when I play games. So it works very well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's get right into the game by talking about kind of where we found ourselves last week and where we are now. Do you want to do that, Curtis? Yeah, sure. So um, the adventure is called The Hangover, uh, which started with them having a, a raucous night at the local tavern, the Black Satyr. And um, they partied for a little while, they shared some drinks, and they were about to start up with a with some noble dude who seemed to be eyeing them up. Uh, Smelled of lavender or lilac or something. <laughs> I don't know. His, some L word. His, his yeah. name was Lavender, Mr. Lavender. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, cool. <laughs> um, but uh, they left <laughs> out, and some time later, they woke up in some strange woods uh, with a man tied up, hanging from a tree, and a chest also lodged in a tree in a smash wagon with a bunch of smash pearls. And they don't remember how they got there. So it's been a trek back in time, essentially, as they go from location to location to figure out the things that they've been up to along the way to get them to the forest. So they met a uh, the leader of the Forested Wood Bandits who kind of lied to them continuously. Um, but it seems like you guys have chosen to take him in for a bounty, perhaps. Uh, so he's been tagging along. You also uncovered in a chest eight smidgens, um, the Half Mandini Circus crew. <laughs> um, Larry Half Mandini said that he'd paid the Rat Queens 10 gold to do a job for them, which they still don't really know what that job entails, but they are tagging along until such time that they finish the job they were paid to do. Uh, and we ended the session with them coming along the road and seeing a man in Dee's dress who called himself Dirk the, or Dick the Word Dirk. Uh, and that's where we left off. So I'll maybe read that intro again, just to kind of set the scene. And uh, then we'll just get right to it. Do you guys have any questions? Any more reminders? Or are we good? I think we're good. All right. I, have, I am more sick than I was last week, so I apologize <laughs> in advance. We also killed a bunch of dudes of like the forest of wood bandits. Yeah, you yeah. pretty much killed his crew, um, who apparently were running Ponzi schemes, and you put an end to that. Um, but I'll, I'll read. Uh, you guys, are, you were heading along the road to Frontier, um, which I will just read the intro again, and we'll get back to it. As you pass the roadside sign that indicates the outhouse of a town frontier lies one mile ahead, you spot a figure on the horizon. And despite the sparkling ocean thrash thrashing against the cliffs below, you can't help but watch the stranger as you approach ever closer. In fact, the closer that you get, the more certain you are that it is indeed Dee who awaits you, despite her being right here. Of course, it becomes clearer with each step that it is indeed a soul-broken man in a D dress. His arms are crossed and he scowls as you close the gap. Oh, perfect. Couldn't leave well enough alone, eh? Come back for a second round of good old Dick the Word Duck, eh? <laughs> he begins to take off the dress, revealing what you've dreamt about in your darkest nightmares, with a pair of testicles to match. Oh, let's just hope to the heavens that I don't repeat my mistakes from last night's word circle, Dirk. Double or nothing? Oh, the question I have for you, ladies, is forwards or backwards? And at that, he stares at you, waiting for a reply. So I immediately begin disrobing. Okay. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I shot back at him, good, no, old, yes, dick, Let's not be generous. Give me my clothes. <laughs> uh, so he, he just nods. Oh, I'd be very glad to. I, I did enjoy wearing it when I had the chance, but I would prefer my clothes back. It, though it seems that you come into a bit of poop. <laughs> these, yeah, were like this when I, these were like this when I woke up. <laughs> uh, this, this, is the, this is the guy that you see. I've, just, I've been printing off people. I'm sorry. If this is you LARPing, I'm sorry, uh, whoever you are. <laughs> uh, but that is Dick the Word Dirk. That was the clothes that you were wearing. Um, yeah. D. 
D, he uh, kind of looks better in your dress than you do. <laughs> Please, he doesn't have the bosom for it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, but he asked us a riddle. I love riddles. Yeah. It's Four, not a riddle. It's forwards or backwards. Forwards or backwards. Choose one, and each of you may choose. And I will say this: there is twenty gold on the line. I have to redeem myself after the terrible efforts of last night. Well, I don't know that I, I really forward. get it, but forward, always forward. Okay, so Violet chooses forward. All right. Ah, very well, very well. Well, Violet, as you introduced yourself last night. Um, I did a bit of thinking since our last conversation, and I believe I have chosen the right word for you to spell forwards. The oh. word for you, Violet, is genealogy, given that you are of noble birth. It's a, I look around at all the other queens. It's a, it's a spelling bee. This is a circle word, Dirk. I'm the worst speller. Uh, and I get, just to be clear, I get 20 gold if I can spell genealogy. Yes. And I, if you, okay. if you do not, I get my pride back. Oh, oh, your pride back. Well, I'm yes. guarding that very jealously. I don't yes, know. You, you, you will fail and you will <laughs> give it back to me. Uh, do it. So spell it. should I, Anna, spell it or should I roll to see if Violet can spell it? <laughs> You do whatever you want. <laughs> you can. Why don't you do? Why don't you spell? This is a um, a character test. Me, okay. LA or test. Well, <laughs> I think Violet has probably had higher education, and I also have had higher education. So there's just about an equal chance that Violet would mess this up as I would. <laughs> so uh, she <clears throat> clears her throat, throws her shoulders back, <clears throat> and assumes like us, like a how you would stand in front of the class. Hmm? Genealogy. G E N E O L O G Y. Genealogy. Oh, <sighs> you are so close, Violet, but I get a little bit of my dignity back. Thank you very much. It is spelled G E N E A L O G Y. Oh, I knew it. I forgot the A. I can feel it coming back. Oh, my self respect oh. is slowly returning. I'm so embarrassed personally because <laughs> I totally know how to spell that word. And the same thing happened to me in the school spelling bee. And I lost uh, the state spelling bee because uh, I missed a letter. Oh, no. uh, I've, tr I've triggered horrible memories. Ah, uh, <laughs> triggered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it makes you feel better. I missed an R in, uh, or an L in Coral. I don't even know any. I still don't know. It That's was athletics for me. I forgot the uh. H. Yeah. Well, That's well, a pretty obvious right one. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And so I got in the middle of genealogy, I had a like little PTSD moment of like, ah, I don't know where I am. I even see the A when I read it in my head. Anyway, excuses. Violet and I both failed. <laughs> All right. Here's your pride back. Whatever. All right. Well, since it's 20 gold pieces, um, we can split that into four. Uh, so it'll be five gold pieces your way for each correct answer. And of course, if you fail, returned dignity to me. Oh, no, no, no. The deal was 20 gold if I got it right. You owe each of us 20 gold if we get it right. Oh. I wouldn't have given your pride back so easily. Oh, it's, I suppose it's worth that much then. Very well. <laughs> what, fair is fair. Betty raises her hand. Yes, Betty. Why would anyone want to spell a word backwards? Well, that is a question, a very good question to ask a word, Dirk. <laughs> you see, I am a traveling word, Dirk. I travel from town to town, testing people on their ability to spell. I don't get to last very long in town. People generally throw me out. What a surprise. I wonder why. <laughs> but I rob them. I rob them of their ability to have self-respect because they cannot spell the words that I can get to them. Violet's like, but so true. <laughs> so is uh, a backwards word worth more? I suppose uh, financially not, but think of how much better you would feel about <laughs> yourself if you could do that quite, quite impressive feat. Are I, you choosing backwards, Betty? I shake my head at her like this from behind him. 
<sighs> right then, out with uh, it, and out with my clothes. Backwards it is. <gasps> backwards, yeah. D, backwards. Uh, <laughs> D. D. We always Ooh, knew D uh, liked it backwards, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have chosen, I have, you have been on my mind since I have, we have last circled it. And on your body as well. <laughs> that is true. Wait. <laughs> I have learned more about you wearing your dress than I probably would an <laughs> evening of conversation and wine. But I have chosen the word for you. Your backwards word, D, is weird. That's an easy one. No fair. Is is this a trick? Spell it. D R I E. Wait. <laughs> yes. D R I E W. <laughs> See, the middle of the word is where it hits, man. Uh, We're all adults, well, and this is scary. Well, yeah, I suppose that. I did not pick the right word because I have not stumped you, oh, your beautiful mind. <laughs> Violet's like, nah, 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 beautiful mind. Anyway, well, yeah. 20 gold it is. 20 gold, and I suppose you may keep a portion of my self respect. And he goes and reaches into a pouch and he pays you 20 gold. Nice. I mutter, I, I think the gold is worth more. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the rest Betty. of you. The I'll rest let of you. Uh, 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 backwards. Backwards. What? Betty, uh, you're terrible Betty. at spelling. Betty, I managed to stump you last night. Let's see if you've learned from your arrogance. Please be mushrooms. Please be mushrooms. <laughs> your be word. Please be mushrooms. <laughs> Is definitely not mushroom. No! It is, that should however, be easy to spell. It matches your personality and your favorite thing. Your word is caramel. What? Caramel? Caramel! <sighs> you got this, Betty. You can do it. You love candy. L Go to your happy place. E. M no, no air writing. I see you air writing over there. L E M E R A C. Oh, Betty, so close, so close. You exchanged an A for an E. Oh, I will take. I'm now. I'm hungry too. <laughs> I will take a little bit of my dignity back. Thank you very much. And he, he has plucks. so much dignity back now. Ugh, he reaches disgusting. into the air and kind of plucks it as though it's in front of him. 50% <laughs> 50 50 dignity. <laughs> oh, very well, Hannah. We had quite uh, the conversation last night. Most of the conversation involved you hitting me with your wand, but... That sounds about right. I believe that I have picked... Ooh, very good words for you. Anna. If she's doing two and she gets them right, then all of us get our great. dignity back. You have yeah. to give all a of us our dignity. Between forwards and backwards. Double or nothing, Hannah. Make him give us our dignity back. Will you give us our dignity and our gold if I choose backwards? You would have to do both words if it's double or nothing. Fine. That seems fair. Done. It is double after all. <laughs> You got this, Hannah. All right, very well. This is so arrogant, just like you were <laughs> last night. Your backwards word is commitment. <gasps> Ooh. Something you greatly fear, am I right, Anna? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this motherfucker. All right, commitment backwards. T. N E M T I M M O C commitment backwards. Oh Hannah yes. I am I am quite aroused, I must say. <laughs> oh my god. Oh well, you, you have one more word, Hannah. 
and you may keep all of the dignity you've already stolen from me. Your forward's word is liaison. Oh. <laughs> I know all about these things. Yes. <laughs> yes, as you told me last night after you poked me with your wand. <laughs> Let's not go into that, shall we? All right. Let's get our gold and get out of here. L I A I S O N liaison. Woo! Damn, damn, damnation! Crying in gold! I have failed. I have failed. Very well, very well. Yeah. I perhaps am in the wrong line of work. My mother said I would be an excellent baker, but I did not believe her. Knowledge she is might, power. She must have been right all along. Well, you've taken my dignity and you've taken all of my gold. I shall continue on. I hug Hannah Outward. around the waist. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys get 80 gold. Yes. And, and he nice. gives you back the dignity that you had already taken from him. You get to keep it. Damn right. I feel much better about myself. Yes. <laughs> um, Does he give me back my clothes? Yes, he hands back the dress because he is standing there naked after all. Good. Um, I, I motion for him to, to turn around and then I swiftly clothe myself. Okay, you, you take the clothes, you put them back on. He takes his and... The poopy there's ones. Almost, there's almost a metaphorical uh, weight to what's happening now as he pulls on the poopy clothing and his head kind of hangs in shame. And he says, well... I suppose I should give up the way of the circle, Dirk. I don't seem to be making many friends doing what I'm doing, and um, perhaps it is time to, for me to return to baking. Perhaps I should return to Palisade and find some work there. Dick the Baker has a really nice ring to it, too. Oh, well, that is that is very true. I suppose I could do a circle bake as well. Like, there are many things you can do in a circle. You wouldn't believe, actually. <laughs> Oh. You need to change your first name so that you have alliteration with baking. Mm, Burke. Very, very smart, very smart, D. Would you have any recommendations since you are so smart with words? <laughs> Betty. Dick. A bick is what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, bick the baker. Mm, I like it. I like it. Ah, yes. very well, very well. Uh, I shall uh, continue along the road in my poopy clothing. Good day to all of you. It's uh, good to see you again. Later, Beck. Thanks, Beck. And he, at that, he puts a bag over his shoulder and Incredible Hulk southward down the road. Well, that was an wow. easy 80 gold. <laughs> Thank you. More adventures like that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of brushed the like crusty vomit off of Hannah that I got on her from hugging her around her waist because that's what I was covered in <laughs> ogre vomit. <laughs> and I look enviously at Dee's clothes and look down at mine. I'm like, and what's in what state are my clothes? I'm curious. Um, very nice. Just just as you left them, just as you remember wearing them the <laughs> night before. Excellent. That's they smell wonderful. Like words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so much. What do you say we uh, get going toward a town where I might be able to clean up? Oh, and eat. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Frontier is only one mile ahead. That's right. We are very close. Let's go. All right. So uh, the four of you, uh, as well as the uh, Larry Halfmandini and his seven other circus crew, they continue to follow along with you, and you continue on the road. And I'll read the next section. As you approach the edge of the shit stain known as Frontier, with its manure-stained, straw-thatched roofs and equally stained people, Larry and his team of painfully serious circus performers come to an abrupt stop. His quasi-joyful demeanor changes, and he plants a fist on the top of a blade pommel at his side. Now, let's talk about what you owe us. We paid you to sneak us into this burg. You never delivered. I figure since we paid you, I'll need you to find another way to earn that coin. He pauses and scratches his chin. There's a lockup in the center of town, protected by the bumbling morons. They would call themselves Town Watch. Larry hops while throwing up air quotes around Town Watch. Go in, retrieve my gold statue, bring it back. Simple. 
all the loose ends tied up in a tiny little bow. Or, you know, he taps the top of the, sword, the short sword pommel and he grins. Gold statue? That's it? A gold man statue, yes, that the town watch. Seems easy enough. Has. And this is his gold statue. Yes. I hmm. I like I like nudge Violet and I'm like, they know that we could kill all of them right now, right? I mean they have to. Okay. But I just I mean it's very possible we do owe them. I don't know. I still don't remember anything from last night. D is definitely like sizing up how spread apart they are, <laughs> like remembering her cone of fire. Uh, and then and then she sort of thinks better of it a little bit. She says, you know, if the town watch stole my gold statue, I'd want it back as well. Yeah, and then I say, may I remind you all that we are trying to be a little less violent, if we can. And we should... if we're less violent, maybe they'll let us drink here. Yeah, we should we should totally try to get dinner out of it. I like that idea. Dinner okay. and booze. Hey, and you know what? This guy and his crew have gold. Who knows what else they might pay us to do? They can't keep giving us money if we kill them. It's a really good point, Hannah. Job security. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, gold yeah, statue gold it is. Statue. <clears throat> Excellent. Do you know anything about where it is? Yes, I believe it is on... The sheriff's desk. He took it from us. That thief. Sheriff's call for you? Right. What does it look like? It's a gold man holding a gold man holding a gold man <laughs> holding <laughs> a gold man. <laughs> oh, so it's like symbolic of you guys. No, that is very yeah. ridiculous of you <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay. All right. Well, seems simple enough. Yeah, we'll take your word for it. You get, you gonna wait here? We will wait here. Yes, outside the town. All right. Good luck to you. And should you be successful, we shall buy you dinner. <gasps> that All sounds right. super fair. There you Perfect. go, buddy. All right, let's uh, go. Let's um, go. Let's off toward the town. All right. So Frontier is a fairly small town. You would guess that it probably has a population of 300. Um, and it looks like it might be a bit of an agricultural town. You can see, even when you were walking along the road, along the coast, that there's like lots of farmland, all that, like kind of cut out of the trees and uh, opened up the land around the town itself. Um, and the town is fairly quiet. You guys approach, it's just past midday now. Um, it, the hangovers are starting to fade a little bit, you know, your headaches dissipating a little, you're starting to feel a little more clear-headed. Uh, as you enter in from the east side of town, this uh, kind of broken dirt road, that clearly not a lot of people stop in in this place on the way to anywhere. Um, there isn't even a town watch, in fact, there's not even a wall. There is like a little kind of archway that you pass underneath and it's kind of dilapidated. You can see that the, it used to say frontier, but half the sign is broken off. Um, and yeah, you see a few people just kind of milling about in town, but it's it's fairly quiet. But you can see right in the town center a large two-story um, building with a thatched roof, uh, and it says right on there, Sheriff. Everything else around, you can see to a little bit to the south of that building, and it's in the center of this large square, and the center of it uh, is the Sheriff's Station, and then south of that you can see there is a little, very small tavern. Um, uh, called the the Unicorn Circle, and it's just south of the the sheriff's station. But pretty much everything else is pretty pretty boring. You, you don't even you kind of forget that you walk past most of these buildings as you enter town. All right, Betty. Um, go ahead. Betty, have you ever seen a unicorn? <laughs> like in real life, not like you know. <laughs> well, you didn't let me answer. <laughs> I was going to say yes and no, but <laughs> I think you kind of already figured it out. <laughs> I've always wanted to see one. I heard you get really high if you snort their horn. Really? <laughs> yeah. But it kills them, so... <gasps> That's a tough choice. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Betty, I think you're the one to do some recon. You're the you're the you know. Is is this place actually the jail? Uh, the the sheriff's. Uh, it is kind of like the yeah. They would have a few cells there as well. Um, it's just kind of like the general. It almost looks like it might be the town center. So it might also act as a government building. You're not sure, but it's not super large. It is a two story. Um, just from uh, just looking at it, you can make an investigation roll, uh, Betty. To see okay. what you kind of think about the building itself. Okay. Damn. Okay. Um, so oh. <laughs> you you figure that uh, so you all twenty, I guess. Total there. I've been locked up there before. <laughs> <laughs> I totally remember this place. Yeah. So you so maybe you have been here before. Uh, the main floor is kind of like where the sheriff is, his office, and the, or sorry, the, the main floor when you first enter is where they keep the cells and then like the regulations and all like his office are on the second floor. Um, uh, and there is kind of like, he's also kind of the mayor as well. Uh, since you have been here before, Betty, you have had a conversation. You don't remember his name. Uh, you don't really remember that, that conversation too well. You just remember the building. So you kind of know the layout of it pretty well. All right. I, I like convey all the information. And then, you know, maybe I was like, well, I thought I was just going to go in there and, you know, maybe say something, but I think the sheriff might remember me. Oh. Uh. So if you want me to do something, it's got to be on the down low. Maybe we should hang back a bit. We do have all this gold. We could always get a drink first in the tavern and ask around about the sheriff before we... I mean... Him. I don't really, like, I'm no Braga, but I could probably fit you in a backpack, Betty, and you could just kind of peer out from it, and we could go inside with you in a backpack. Or I could be the distraction, and you could go in when the sheriff comes out because I'm making all the trouble in the town. That also sounds super fun. What do you think, Hannah? It'll work. What do you plan to do? <laughs> what don't I plan to do? <laughs> Set something on fire, throw some eggs at some houses, make some people mad, tie some shoelaces together, spike some people's drinks, oh. all the things. <laughs> now, all right. that does sound like an excellent plan, Betty, but those are all things that any of us could do. All of us are excellent at setting things on fire or throwing eggs at houses. We could even spike drinks, but maybe you have the resources for that. If but you not... think you can beat me in a setting things on fire contest, you are so wrong, D. More to the point, I don't think I could beat you in a staying hidden contest. <sighs> That's a point. I mean, how about we do a little bit of both? We get Betty into the building, into the center where she can do the most damage and cause the most distraction. Like maybe when we're actually in the mayor's office, she pops out and runs. Maybe he'll chase after her and then we can just grab the statue and get out. Right. You said you're hungry anyways, right, Betty? I am. Why don't we go into the tower and check things out? You hide in the backpack and then we'll let you loose. All right. The backpack. Get in there. <laughs> Do we have a backpack big enough for her? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Come on, little smidgen. I put her on. I see her like poking out the top and like shove her head back down before we walk in. Put a sock on it so it looks like, you know. <laughs> Why don't you make a stealth check for, for Betty in the backpack? I'll give you advantage. Do I, I make it or whoever? Uh, Betty. Yeah, you make it. Okay. Uh, this might be tough. <laughs> 21. All right, 21. Uh, so the question I have for the, the Red Queens are, what are you doing with the cap the captive that you have? Is he still being led around on a rope? Which captive? <laughs> yeah. you guys, we you forgot guys, we had a captive. <laughs> you guys took the bandit that you uh, had in the tree. You tied him up. You've been leading him around. Yeah. Didn't we kill him? <laughs> no. We, we did not kill him. I, I think We so killed sorry. all his friends. Who was dragging him around? Who was? Who did have him? Well, well he we was should the take forested... him to the sheriff, and then when they're busy locking him up, then Betty can go steal the statue. 
Oh, he's a thinker. I did. I forgot that we didn't kill him because we killed yeah, all I, his friends. I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've just been holding on to this rope, not thinking about it. Yep. I mean, I figure we take a bit and we say, where's your sheriff? Uh, we have a guy. Maybe he will get some gold out of that, too. I'm just trying to make yeah. as much money as we possibly can. <laughs> this town, okay? And then we can party it up again. Mm-hmm. So let's just bring him in. I mean... What's he gonna do? It's fine. <laughs> so you're gonna take your captive in? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna. Okay the whole guy is, is that we're trying to turn this guy into the sheriff, and we want to see yeah. the sheriff personally. Okay. All right, we're so very you're... upstanding citizens. So you're so you're heading into the sheriff's office then? Yeah. Uh. I. Yeah. Do you guys want to go into the sheriff's office straight yeah. away, or go into the? Okay. We have so business. In there. All right. So the four of you, uh, with your. Uh, I think his name was Drake. I don't know that you ever actually uh, found out his name, but yeah, it wasn't important. He, he wasn't seems important. like he would be named Drake. <laughs> um, you lead him into the into the sheriff's office, and there's two younger men. It looks like they're just on a bit of a break. They might be local soldiers or guards or whatever. They're armed. They got armor on. They got swords, and uh, they're sitting in the far corner as you open the door. And there's a desk there, and you can see there's three jail cells immediately just right there to the uh, to the left of them. And they're sipping tea as you walk in, the four of you with your prisoner. And there's a man standing up. He's fairly large. He's about six foot six. He's human, uh, a big kind of bustly, like, you know, he's got the big arms. He's kind of like those strong men. He looks like one of those uh, from the strong men competition. That's, that's him. And he's standing. He's not wearing any armor or anything like that, but he's got a, a bastard sword at his side. And he sees the four of you walk in. Can I help you? Dibs. <laughs> uh, we have a delivery. Uh, what do we got here? And he reaches into uh, into his shirt and puts on some glasses, walks over. Ah, uh, so someone finally caught you, hey, Drake, you bastard. Drake just spits on the ground. You can't keep me forever. <laughs> Sheriff Anwan. I'll be out before you know it. Well, technically, if they have the death penalty, then he doesn't need to. Quiet, you. <laughs> <laughs> so you these women. Sheriff crosses his arms. Yeah, I know this man. He's been constant trouble running a banditry operation in the woods south of here. I don't think Person. you'll have to worry about that any longer. Oh? Yep. And why is that? He's a little short on helpers. <laughs> We may have done you a service, which we may deserve gold for. We can discuss that later. Or other compensation. You know, whatever you feel is appropriate. <laughs> so I motions to, boys, <laughs> you lock this man up. Looks at, over to D. Gives a nod. <laughs> I think I know where you're going with that, but uh, again, at a later time. Lock these, lock this guy up, and so the two guards stand up and they jostle him over and huck him in jail and he uh sheriff Anwan goes over to a desk and he starts kind of uh with a parchment and a quill and ink he starts writing something out hands it to you all right well this is your payment uh there was a bounty of five gold which i have to go upstairs to get and uh also a voucher for free dinner over at the unicorn circle yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't see a statue on this desk, do we? No. So he's probably upstairs. He gets up and uh, he's got a key ring on his belt and he goes <clears throat> over to the door, pulls out his keys, uh, unlocks the door, and you can see as soon as he opens up, there's a staircase going up. I say, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yes. We, we've, we've always wanted to see a real sheriff's office. Would you mind <laughs> if, if we followed you up there? D just like subtly adjusts her shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, we mean. Oh. And I kind of like shove her forward. D has always like, been extremely interested in I, extremely. I would love to take my backpack with me up to the sheriff's office and check it out, Hannah. All right. Personally. Um... <laughs> I just grab the backpack from you and like shove it into D's arms. Yeah, that was getting heavy. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. That was getting uh, really heavy. I, I'm like, what do I need the backpack for? I have a... Oh! <laughs> it's really heavy, D. Carry it for me, please. Carry the on. sex toys, D. Uh, <laughs> sex toys are very heavy, yeah. 
do you? They need, uh, they need to lay off the cake. <laughs> why, why don't you make a um, a persuasion roll, uh, D? Oh, great! I'm great at persuasion. It's with it, it's with advantage. It's with advantage. Oh, good. Okay, because we a were 15. helping. Yeah, yeah. Good, good role play. So he <laughs> he's like, oh, all right. I mean, I I mean, I understand. It's uh, it's quite impressive. And he goes and he opens up the door and he motions for D to go on upstairs. When he says it's quite impressive, I just roll my eyes at everybody else. <laughs> I wink at her. All right. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. So uh, he follows. He closes the door behind, leaving uh, Violet and Hannah behind with the the two guards who go back to sipping their tea. And they're definitely eyeing uh, the two ladies up. They don't get visitors very often, quite clearly. Uh, but you head up with uh, Sheriff Anwan. And uh, you get up to the top, and it's just one room, mm. and it's his desk. And sure enough, you see um, a golden statue. It's probably you know about like eight inches high. It doesn't look like it would be too heavy. Um, mm. And he goes and he sits down behind the chair, and goes into the another key he pulls out, and it looks like he's there's a little shelf or a drawer underneath his desk, and you can hear the keys rattling, and opens up the drawer, pulls out some gold pieces. So when so, he looks, when he looks up, yeah. All he sees is cleavage. Okay. <laughs> that's that's it. That's just oh, by the way, um I set my, my heavy backpack down at like the corner of the staircase. Uh, okay. Um and yeah, I'm just I'm just leaning over. This is a very impressive office. <laughs> All right, he's gonna make a little check here. All right, so he, he kind of gets a bit flustered. <laughs> you know, uh, it is what it is. I mean I I'm an important man in town, and so, you know, I get the nice office. <laughs> Cleavage save. <laughs> yeah. Failed. <laughs> so he's, yeah, he seems pretty into into D. He's got, he's distracted, but fairly clearly distracted at this point. Um, he's blustering on about how it wasn't an elected office. It was gained through um, valor and bravery. Valor uh, and then, bravery? Yeah. He's, he's uh, very I much... squeeze his bicep. I'm like, <laughs> is that how you got these two? <laughs> It's one of the ways, yes. Um, I also uh, work out. So if you ever want to join me. <laughs> In your workouts? Yes, yes. Huh. Maybe we should discuss this over a drink. My friends are waiting downstairs. Yeah, I think, uh, like, maybe I pop my head out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, like, looking around to see if maybe there's a place I could hide. Let's see here. It, like until they left. Um, yeah, you can make a perception check. Actually, do an investigate check. Okay, I'm investigating. <laughs> All I'm right. Just twirling my hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a uh, you would think would be kind of like a coat uh, closet. Uh, right, like he put the you were down at the door. It's immediately to your left. You could probably crawl out of there and pop it. The door is even open a little bit, uh, but you have to make another stealth roll uh, if you want to try to get into there. But that's about the only place you could see that would be the immediate place to hide. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm going for the closet. All right, nice. go for it. Yeah, and I've got like my hands like all over his chest. I'm just like, oh, tell me about when you fought the bad men. Oh, <laughs> goodness, just impressive. So that's got to be advantage right there. Does, uh, oh, yeah. do I, like, does, say, Dash help me at all? Or is there anything? Um, I'll give I'll give you advantage just because the the, the excellent distraction that you have, right, that, he's been, okay. that D is helping you out with. OK. Wish me luck. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> Even with advantage. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. All right, so uh, the sheriff is kind of leaning forward, and he's he's now whispering about some of the things that he's not proud of, but it usually involves killing bad guys. He does not, he's not happy that he's had to kill people in the past, but sometimes yeah. you have to do the dirty work. To it's such a safe. dark past. Yeah, he's, he's very troubled, you can see. Cool. Um, but then all of a sudden, there's kind of the, there's just this little like rustle in the corner, and he kind of looks up. Yeah, I immediately kiss him full on the mouth. <laughs> <With tongue. laughs> all right. Um, he just kind of, uh, he's all right, he's very distracted. Betty, you hop into that closet. And uh, he kind of leans back, and his face is flushed red, and 
he picks up the bag of coins. He's like, all right, uh, oh, well, um, uh, yes, let's uh, let's see to your friends, I guess. Um, uh, have a few drinks, perhaps. Um, where, where do, what are we doing here? What? Oh, yeah, uh, right. We were collecting payment for yes, my friends, right. but <laughs> yes, let's return downstairs. And I hook one arm <laughs> through his, and I, I, like, pet his shoulder oh. with my other arm. Of course, of course. And, and so and, both of you. And right. as we leave, I forget conveniently to pick up the backpack. Okay. All right. Steven, you're such a good seductress. Uh, you know, I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> I, that was not acting, my friend. That was all me. I was, uh, was I doing? Uh, 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 uh. All right. So uh, he leaves with you and uh, closes the, the door at the top of the stairs. And you guys descend down and meet the others in the main area. I, I, once we get back downstairs, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, Anwan. Sheriff Anwan. Anwan. Uh, yeah. You know, I... I, I agree to everybody I say, Anwan has our reward and he gets off soon. So it's good time for us to all go and have a drink together and discuss it's our various exploits. It turns out Anwan is quite the bandit slayer, aren't oh, you? Oh, come on now. That's true, but come on. <laughs> oh yeah, he sounds so great. Let's go drink. Maybe yeah. everybody wants to come, I say, inviting the guards. Oh, nice. um, you guys yeah. go. I'll stay behind and watch the jail. Don't worry about it. You guys go have fun. <laughs> the sheriff kind of um, sheriff kind of quirks his head at that. He's gonna make uh, an insight check. I, I wink uh, at, uh, um, at at Violet. I say, I think we should all go. <laughs> it's much more fun with you there, Vi. You can't stay here. He's like, well, well, well. Hold on. I I, I trust you, ladies. I mean. You come, you brought in this troublesome Drake. You've been so kind. And D has, has been so attentive to my stories. Violet, if you'd like to stay behind, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> well, I mean, really. I mean, well, that, I mean, if you don't think anything's going to happen, I could totally <laughs> just come with you so that my whereabouts, there's like no question about <clears throat> my whereabouts. Uh, I mean, yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Let's all just go drink. You guys come too. I clap the guards on the back. All right, so they all look very well. Let's go, boys. We've had a hard day. We deserve a few drinks. Come on, then. And he motions them, and they fall in line, and you guys all head out to the unicorn circle. I just kind of like look back over my shoulder a few times, a little worried that we're leaving Betty behind, but she can take care of herself. She's alone in a jail, in an empty jail. She'll be fine. <laughs> she tends to set things on fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. maybe maybe I actually like grab Violet, um, just to like let her in on on what I was intending as as the plan. Um, I'm I'm going to tell him I forgot my backpack. We're going to ask him to go back so that I can just pick it up, and then we'll come right back, and we will have <coughs> Betty with us. Okay, as long as it doesn't seem like any of us stole it, that sounds like a good idea. Exactly. All right. So, uh, the, all of you leave. Betty, you are now in the office alone. All right. Um, I mean, I guess I sort of sneak out the, the door. Is the door to the room shut then? Yeah, so there's a door at the top of the stairs and at the bottom. Uh, he closed the door in the uh, upper level as well. Okay, so I'm like in the closet. I still have to get to the room. No, you're in the room. The okay. room is like, you're, yeah. Okay, I understand. Okay, so uh, then I'm just gonna get out and like I think before I even look for this thing, I'm gonna like sit down in this chair and put my <laughs> up on his desk, you know, and think about what it'd be like to be sheriff of a small town for a couple of seconds and realize that that's really dumb and I would want to do that for him. <laughs> God, anyway. And I'm like, oh yeah, the gold statue, and. Uh, I, do I see it immediately? Or? Yeah, it's, it's right on the desk. It's sitting kind of, uh, he's got a bunch of paperwork and it's actually looked like the paperwork is kind of tucked under the statue a little bit. Like it might be a paperweight. Okay. And um, yeah, it's just right on the desk, right in front of you there. Well, before I go for the statue, is there a window or anything? Yeah, yeah, there's a window right behind you. He's got a nice big bay window <laughs> behind you that uh, it's, it's, you can open it and close it. Okay. Nice. Um, I'm just gonna totally grab this. Actually, the statue's right there. I'm gonna go through his drawers first. Sure. 
Yeah. All right, so uh, make an investigation check. All right. Oh, damn. 22. Oh, shoot. Whoa. You see everything. Yeah. All right. Um, the, main, the main thing that you find of interest with that excellent role is um, a journal that, uh, I mean, he does have that locked um, drawer that you heard him go into and get the money out of. But just in another drawer, you find it's kind of stashed at the far back. It is a journal, and it's all about the sheriff's um, exploits. And after sleeping through it, you find out that all of the exploits and everything that he's been uh, telling Dee while you were sitting there listening is all a novel that he's writing about the life of the man that he took over for this job that he killed <gasps> and has awesome. assumed his identity. I'm um, way more into this guy now. That's juicy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you do find some paperwork about the half Mandinis. Uh, oh. It looks like there was like a, he had arrested them and uh, had thrown them out of town for basically stealing from all the townsfolk, pretending to be a circus. They were actually here robbing people. Mm. All right. Cool. Those bastards. Uh, and there's no mention of the fact that they had a gold statue that he took from them. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I th okay. I I'm still gonna grab the statue. Um, and oh, do I want it? Yeah, I'll take the journal too. Okay, you grab the journal, and you go to grab the statue, and you pull it, and you cannot lift it up. It's not too heavy? First, not on a first try, anyway. Uh, and you said there are some papers under it? Yeah. I'm going to try to pull those papers out. All right, so you, you try to pull the papers out, and you can't move them. How, how strong do you want to pull it? Like, all your strength, or just you're just tugging on it a little bit? All my smidgen strength. <laughs> all right, so the papers tear uh, basically around the bottom of that statue, and they just kind of rip as you pull them out. But uh, there's still taps of paper underneath that statue now. What the fuck? <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like ram the desk. Ram it. Ram. Like I'm just ram gonna it? try to ram the desk. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoulder throw the desk. You're gonna try to you're gonna try to flip it over. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm a smidgen, right? Like, yeah. I don't think I can flip it over, so I'm going to... This is Betty. She's going to go... She's going to try to knock the thing off of the desk, yeah. All right. So go ahead and make a strength check. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Wow. Not bad. Nice. Your, your dice are hot today. They are. All oh. right, so you, you managed to, like, you just flip the table over uh, with, your, <laughs> with your brute... Uh, smidgen strength and as the table hits the ground the stack the little statue stays affixed to it even though gravity should have had it fall to the ground <laughs> no make it make, make, look... make a perception check yeah. um okay i was he... i was gonna also look under the table uh <laughs> 18. 18 perception no, I, I think it's about this time as we're like stepping into the tavern that D goes, oh, silly me, I, I left my backpack upstairs. Oh, Can we oh. run back and get it together? Oh, oh, darling, don't you worry. He goes and gives you, here's the keys. I trust you. Oh, thank you so no, much. No, D, I don't want you to walk back alone. <laughs> it's so true, such a dangerous town. Surely I need someone big and strong to protect me. He kind of does that. Well, if you would like me to, I I would be glad to escort you, my lady. I would. Hmm, excellent. Or we can <laughs> just pick it up after we're done drinking. I mean, drinks all around. <laughs> yeah, you guys are already there, and uh, the first round comes up, and the looks like those uh, two plucky young guards have already paid for the first round for you guys. Nice. And, yeah, let's uh, stay a little longer. Uh, you know... With such a heavy backpack, I'm just a little worried about drinking inhibiting my ability to perform, so... <laughs> oh, okay. 
And we won't be long. And I'm just like, I hope Betty's done. We'll we'll be quick. All right. All right. So, are you, are, Dee, are you you're gonna go with the sheriff? Yep, totally. Okay. Um, you guys go back out, and uh, Dee, you can make a perception check. Okay. Let's see perception. Mm, Eighteen. So perceptive. Uh, you see, just at the last second, a whole bunch of smidgens duck around the corner to go behind uh, the the sheriff's building. You just see uh, two of them go around the corner. Um, that's all. You just see them disappear around the corner. Uh, nice. Betty, you take 12 points of damage as you get crushed in the back of the skull with something. <gasps> Whoa. Oh my god. Oh no! What have we done? Our poor little smidgen. Oh my god. Does that like knock me unconscious or uh if you're out of if you're out of hit points, yes. No, I have eight hit points. You're definitely stunned. It's you were not expecting it at all. You didn't hear anything, you didn't see anything. Um and you do fall to the ground, you stumble forward a little bit, and you see feet run past you. And that window, as you slowly gather your senses, has been opened up. And you get, as your eyes kind of focus in again, you see Larry Halfmandini. He's hit you uh, with a blackjack in the back of the head. Whew. And he's grabbing, he's about to grab that statue. And he looks at it and says, good luck picking that up. And all of a sudden you hear a magical whoosh. And he picks up the statue and throws it into his bag. What do you do? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tackle him first. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, make an athletics check. We'll just see if we can grab him and then we'll, uh, do a, let's do an opposed athletics as you guys tumble into each other and try to tackle each other. Cool. Betty got uh -oh. a six. Oof. Uh, he got a five. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> so you managed, you grab him and as you bowl into him, it looks like he's about to, uh, kind of go towards the window, it knocks the statue out of his hand and it flips through the air and then hits the ground with a solid thud and you hear another magical whoosh. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, so I, I ask um, uh, Anwan, is that his name, Anwan? Yeah, Sheriff Anwan. I say, so Sheriff Anwan, what do you know of this this circus troupe, Harry Halfawini and his, his tiny <laughs> men? Yeah, <laughs> good one, good one. Yeah, that's good. I get it. Um, <laughs> well, they were uh, they were a uh, ragtag bunch of circus performers, and they were doing tricks and all sorts of things performing here in town. But it turned out that half of the crew was the circus, and the other half was while well, they were going into houses and robbing everybody blind. So I threw them in jail for a couple of days and caught one of them. Somehow got out of jail, souping around my office. So I kicked them out of town and told them to never return on pain of death. You don't say. Those smidgens. Such a troublesome lot. Very troublesome. Very tr <laughs> Every last one of them. So he continues to walk in. He goes and uh, unlocks the door to go up the stairs. Uh, you guys, you can make another. Actually, he's going to make a perception. Uh, there's kind of a, a loud thud and a, you hear a woof sound. And he turns his head. Someone's after my statue! And he runs up the stairs. <laughs> and he draws oh. his sword. Uh-oh. Wow. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I go running up the stairs after him. All right, you're up the stairs. B Betty, what are you doing? The two of you are tussling on the ground, and that statue is right there. Uh, it, so it's not out the window on the ground, it's in the... Yeah, it got to about the, the almost well, to the wall and just hit the ground. In the I field. mean, I'm around D and Han enough to know that, like, that was definitely some magical shit, and I probably yeah. wouldn't be able to do anything. So, I think I do just try to, uh, uh, like, keep him from doing anything. Okay, so you're gonna just try to hold him down? And I don't hear any commotion, like, from the stairs or anything. Uh, yeah, make a perception check. Let's see if you okay. hear someone coming up the stairs. Yeah, let me check ah! that first. Uh, I, I shout. <laughs> I'm shouting, oh, no, it sounds like half a weenie himself. <laughs> 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 All right, so you definitely hear D is coming, and you hear heavy footsteps as well, which definitely is 
not D. It's a giant man that you are, that uh, you have seen before from the backpack. Do I have uh, enough time to run back in the closet? Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna run back in the closet. <laughs> okay, make a stealth check. Okay. Oh, 19. Wow. Yeah. All right, so he, you, you just run in right in front of the door as the top of his head kind of crests the stairs and you duck into that closet. And the last thing you kind of see is you kind of close it a little bit to hide yourself is Larry Halfman Dean, he goes and he goes to grab it and he says, good luck picking that up. And you hear a whoosh and he picks it up to look over to see the sheriff there. And he's like, ah, <laughs> screw you, sheriff. And he jumps. <laughs> He goes to jump out the window. Um, D, what do you want to do? You get there at the same time. Yeah, Ooh. let me let me look at my spells and everything. Ah, bless, cure wounds, healing words, shield of faith, fog cloud, thunder wave. Well, I guess it's thunder wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I get to the top of the stairs and I say, half a weenie? And then I, blah, it's just thunder wave. All right, so does he get a... The, uh, he gets a constitution thing? saving yeah. throw, right. and that's versus a 13. Uh, no, he fails. All right, so that's 2d8 damage, and he's pushed 10 feet away from me. So that's 8 damage. Oh, actually, no, wait. I want to use my... Um, oh, you get max damage, I think, if you... Um, No, I only get it once per day. Uh, have you used it, though? Yes, oh, I used it. I used it on the crew of, of yeah. folks. Okay, yeah. All right. So yeah, he so, takes eight damage. So he turns and he's about to leap out. Though he kind of jumps up, and the shockwave <sighs> hits him. I'm gonna make a strength check to see if we can hold on to that thing as he gets blasted ten feet out the window. Uh, he does not hang on to it. He just yes. blam, and you just see half man Dini go ah! <laughs> get out the window, <laughs> and the the statue comes straight down, vroom, picks us to the ground again. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, so the sheriff is like, oh, those, those half Mandinis are constant thorn in my side. And he runs out to the window and uh, he starts yelling at them. Get out of my town. I said such I'm a, to death. Such a troublesome lot. Um, well, I've got my backpack. And then I like sort of nudge the backpack. I see it's still empty. I say, <laughs> I've got yeah, my his, backpack. His, his back is turned to you right now. He's yelling at the half Mandinis out the window. Are you you want me to like try to yeah. jump in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'll Make do that. Check. All right. Come on, Betty. Oh, oh no! It was bound to happen. So he turns around at the exact moment as you open the bag and are about to put your head in, and he turns around and sees that. A D. It looks like you have a smidgen getting into your bag. Um, <laughs> and that's a great time to take our first break. All right, cool. <laughs> Guys, we are going to be uh, offline for just a couple minutes. The stream will stay live, so stay, hang out, chat, and we'll be back in a few minutes with the second part of this second episode of Rock Queens D&D. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 